Not Nerd Podcast, Episode 372, Kill and Yank. Welcome to the Not Nerd Podcast. I'm Nate Heath, and we are here to help you tech better. Here with me, as always, Mr. Dave Baylor. Hey, Nady. It's your birthday. It's your birthday. I uh, don't know the rest. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's not my birthday, oh. but we do have a couple birthdays to talk about. Uh, not yours either, but nope. uh, Macintosh, mm. Apple, just celebrated 39 years. I've heard those guys. And yes. so I'm older than Apple. Yes. Which is very weird to think about. It is. I always put myself in a mindset of what was happening back then. A lot of these historical photos I look at, I'm like, I was there. I was in the zeitgeist of when this happened. Yeah. But this was pre-internet. Yeah. I was in the Midwest. I'm young. I'm not reading trade publications. Yes. And yes. it's like, oh, this happened like yeah, when it's I was like in this parallel universe of things yeah. things going on. But yeah. So. You learn about it much, much later and it's like, oh, I wish I kinda would have been part of that you know yes 1984 yeah was, which uh, was a great year yes all mm. kinds of great things happened in hollywood and 84 in the tech industry it's one of my favorite years yes well also uh many years younger but equally as important uh not nerd we let our seventh birthday uh pass right by it was <laughs> i believe january 9th 2016 is when we had our first episode and uh we've just had such an exciting start to the year i just remembered this week so seven years we've been doing this podcast still haven't missed a week that is crazy uh, and i'm gonna right now because what better than to do things on a live to tape show yes i'm gonna put it on my calendar oh january 9th you say yes all right um i have a report deadline due that day um i hope i got it done (laughs) yes so anyway so great i'm putting it on there right now very nice yes that's uh seven years very cool we posted a, a year ago that um, the the photos, the selfies we took on that day, yeah, uh, which is crazy. Sitting at your kitchen table with handheld microphones and what a what a time to be alive. Yes, that yes, was, that was good. We every time this comes around, I think of that time. We talked about it forever. Yes, we're gonna do this. We should do this. We should get something together. We're gonna get it going. And then weeks would go by, and we'd be like, oh, we should do that thing. And then one day, all the the stars and planets aligned and we we just did it and it was terrible so for any of those of you out there who are interested in doing a podcast but you're waiting for the perfect moment it's like having a kid you're never going to be ready just do it yes yep uh very cool well let us move into some follow-up uh a quick FTX story. The Fed sees almost 700 million with an M dollars in assets from FTX. They're trying to, uh, you know, make all the all the people whole on this, and For you all know, the, all the debtors and stuff. At one point, he had said that you know he only had a hundred thousand dollars left in his bank account, and this was you know stocks, uh, a lot of Robinhood stock, mm-hmm. um, and and other stuff. But uh, yeah, that continues. And I saw something that the new CEO of FTX, who's kind of handling a lot of the bankruptcy stuff, he's like, I think we could get FTX going again and have a people really like the product. And it's like, no, mm, maybe no, not. Let's There's pass. plenty of other crypto clearinghouses out there that do the same thing. We don't. We don't need you. Yes, yes. And uh, on to Twitter. So we talked last week about the, it seemed like the third-party clients were going away. Well, we have a little more information. Yes, Dave, single tier. My tier uh, down. The Twitter dev team tweeted on January 17th, Twitter is enforcing its longstanding API rules. That may result in some apps not working. Uh, and then they quietly updated their developer policy <laughs> <laughs> to basically cut off these third-party apps. So, um, we're, we're basically broke apps for not following the rules that we have not implemented yet. 
Yes, 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 exactly. <laughs> and so uh, while I have liked many things that Twitter has done since Elon took over, this one seems uh, pretty petty. And like we talked about last week, I can see why they want to do it, but the way that they did it uh, is not winning any fans. Yeah, they just shut it off one day. It's yeah. like no communication. And there are those of us who spent money on third-party apps because they were blessed by the company and using the APIs. Yes. It's like, well, I'm not going to get that money back. Yes, yes. Um, and they, actually, one of them, I forget which, might have been Twitterific or TweetBot, they actually you know, sent out a letter saying, please don't ask for refunds on this. You know, you paid for the app. And was it a one-time purchase? I think both of them converted to a yearly subscription okay. model where you got different benefits um so you you buy it for a year i think yes yes and i will say as an official twitter app user uh they are updating the ui and stuff and they kind of keep moving things around a little bit and i find myself clicking like on the wrong thing when i'm trying to like a tweet but they twitter did not move fast i've said this for a very long time they wouldn't change anything and now elon it's kind of like okay let's try this let's try this let's try this something new And for the people like me who did purchase the third-party apps or did a subscription, we're not talking lots of money. It's like five bucks, six bucks or something. I mean, nothing to worry about. Yes, yes. Well, uh, in other possible Twitter news, we talked about how uh, Trump's account had been reinstated, but he hasn't tweeted. And a little more information has come out that it sounds like um, he has a truth social contract Hmm. where he exclusively posts to Truth Social, but it sounds like, and Rolling Stone even puts stuff behind a dang paywall, uh, (laughs) but it sounds like maybe he's trying to get out of that contract because Truth Social is Truth Social and Twitter is Twitter. Um, So maybe in the next couple months, he might be making his triumphant return to Twitter. Oh, wow. I I guess look forward to that because i am not following him on truth social well actually technically i am but i haven't logged into truth social since the last time we talked about it like four months ago yes i haven't uh either and yes so he's looking to do that and possibly facebook i think there is some news that his account might be uh reinstated on facebook as well as he looks for his 2024 presidential bid which I will remind people, we are the most nonpartisan tech podcast on the internet. So we will move on to the next story. Well, I do want to do a quick thing yes. regarding the Twitter yes. apps is that the developers of TweetBot are making basically the same app for Mastodon. Yes. And that is forthcoming. And I will probably buy that. So don't forget that Mastodon is out there if you want to do that. Yes, yes. And who makes TweetBots? Um... Is it uh, Tapbots? Tapbots. Tapbots. Yes. And they have... Um, That's my preferred. I, Twitterific's okay, but I like the Tweetbot. Yes. And then Twitterific, I think, was the other one. That's that by is the Icon Factory. The Icon Factory, which I saw the, kind of their goodbye letter. And they do make uh, several other apps. So I went to check a couple of those out. And uh, so they can, you can still support Icon Factory now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Tweetbot, they don't, you might not until this Mastodon, but again, the Mastodon thing, I'm not bothering with it. Yeah. But anyways, so last week we had our breaking news on the new Max, the M2 uh, Max that they released. And the day after we recorded, the day the episode came out, they had another new product, Dave. Yes, the HomePod, the long-awaited re-revival of yes. the full-sized HomePod. Because yeah. if you recall, they had the HomePod. It was way overpriced. It did not have an auxiliary input. It didn't support third-party music services. Yes. It's just Apple Music only, and it was basically uh, a, a Siri squawk box and an Apple Music portal. Yeah, that's all it did. You, I don't even think you could set multiple timers back at this time. Oof. Just one timer. And then uh, there was completely surprised when nobody purchased this. I think three hundred and fifty dollar yes. dumb speaker, basically. And so they discontinued it. But in the midst of it, they had the minis. Yeah. I'm holding two virtual two. minis in <laughs> front of me. And they're 99 bucks. And guess what? People liked them. Yeah. They could spend 99 bucks and they sounded good enough. You know? Yeah. Well, the full size HomePod is back with a price 
cut this time. No longer will you have to spend $350 at enormous cost for a dumb speaker. It's now just two ninety nine, dollars yeah. <laughs> So you can save your 50 bucks. And <clears throat> what's interesting um, is they took away some of the equipment inside instead of having like seven speakers it's now five speakers instead of seven microphones it's now five microphones and i gotta be honest it probably sounds exactly the same yeah yeah i mean that's a lot of speakers in a small amount of space so just make them a little bigger you know yeah uh so i've not tried this it's brand new i think uh reviews are starting to come out yes the siri uh uh, globular galaxy lights on the top yes. uh, is bigger now which <laughs> is good and it's got uh, built in humidity and temperature sensors for your connected home yeah. uses and so it's moved down the playing field a little bit with more features and Nate I'm seriously contemplating getting one of these and using it as my sound bar yeah. in my house right now I have an older Vizio soundbar, mm-hmm. which has a video pass through, which is great. Yeah. It only supports 1080p. And I had all this oh. stuff with my Xbox and all yeah. these things going to the other part of the room. And I'm just like, so I ended up having my soundbar under my couch, which is great for when you're watching TV on the couch. Yeah. If you're sitting in front of the couch, it's a little weird to have the sound coming from a different location than the TV. So my plan is if I can convince the missus is to get one of these $300 home pods, put it on the floor or on a small little riser yeah. right near the TV area where there's a, a wall plug. Yeah. And it can just live there. And I'm thinking it will fill the room with yes. my cinematic experience. And if that goes well, buy a second one for the other wall plug to the left yeah. and have kind of the stereo two columns yes. of uh, home pods and they now come in black and white i don't know if the old ones had a white I, option but... i think it was only one color before i forget yeah. which one it was so anyway you were right to hand it to me because i'm kind of excited about this yeah. product but at 300 bucks i'm hesitating i know i know i had the same thought as you i've got my uh tcl uh sound bar that matches my tcl tv and it works pretty good but i was like man could get one of these for 300 or i could get two two of the minis and do the stereo with the minis and mm-hmm. stuff and it's like i i think i'm gonna wait a while but uh i've yeah. never owned one of the home pod products which is surprising for me mm-hmm. the guy that usually buys a lot of the apple stuff but um you know as far as the home uh virtual assistant thing like i don't use alexa i don't use any of that stuff i rarely use siri unless isla and i are asking it knock knock jokes yeah um but i i could see the advantage of with my apple tv having this having it paired having it work well uh so i i do see see an advantage to this they're yeah. very nice devices yeah i was a little skeptical of the minis that the bass response just wouldn't be there so i'm yeah. like is it going to be better than my tv really? yeah that's true i mean it would be better but is it worth yeah spending 200 dollars, 100 dollars each on those so I'm thinking one HomePod. I'm going to lose some of that stereo imaging stuff unless I get a second one. Yeah. But maybe one is just fine. Yeah. You know, I don't know. Yes. And I can always take it back. Apple has a return policy. Yes, they do have a return policy. So it would be worth it to uh, try it out and see how it works. So keep keep your ears tuned for upcoming... Uh, Maybe we'll both magically make it our pick of the week the same week (laughs) as we decide to pull the trigger and get one and set it up. We're the two Spider-Mans pointing. You got one? You You got got one? one? Wow. Uh, Well, uh, ChatGPT, which is another thing that seems to come up a lot with us, uh, there has been some talk. There's a... There's been talk all along of a pro version. Um, I did see some screenshots of uh, that starting to be presented for people where you get some more features uh, at $42 a month, which you might be going, oh my goodness. But there's a lot of people getting really creative with uh, chat GPT and people trying to make a lot of money off of it. So they're going to keep a free version, but $42 a month. That's, you know, we'll see how that works out. Now, I... We haven't talked about it, but there's, well, we talked briefly about, you know, colleges are trying to block it and somebody's trying to create a software that would be able to tell if stuff's written with chat mm-hmm. and GPT. But I did just see this week that 
Um, I think it passed a bar exam and a oh, wow. medical school exam and all these different exams that Look, they're running through it. And We can't keep people from discovering financial corruption. Yeah. Or there was a story about an FBI guy who stole money and was colluding with Russians and yeah. all this stuff. So if we think that we can somehow sense that a computer AI is doing something, we're, there's, yeah. come on. We're, yes. we're fooling ourselves. Yeah. This thing is, we don't have the capacity yeah. to do this. If we can't even keep our house in order, how are we going to keep an AI in order? So it's just going to be out there. We're yeah. never going to know if a person wrote it or if chat GPT wrote it. We'll, it's just, we're just never going to know. Yeah. It's going to be unknowable. Yeah. It's, we, it's a new adjustment in our society. Like we seem to be making many of them as technology uh, quickly advances. But yeah. And I saw another article that it's, you're going to be shocked. It's u- being used for nefarious purposes. What? What? That the would never happen. Being used for bad stuff? Yeah. Come on. Yes. Uh, well, speaking of bad stuff, Google, Microsoft, Amazon, and other tech companies have laid off more than 70,000 employees in the last year. Now, I'm not a a number scientist like you, but that is a lot. Yes. Yeah. So we've talked about this a little bit, but uh, Alphabet is cutting 12,000 jobs. Google's, you know, parent company, Microsoft, that was one of the newer ones, 10,000 jobs. Uh, Amazon, 18,000. We've talked about that. And then it kind of uh, goes down from there. One of the things that I've been seeing discussed oh meta with Mm, 11,000 twitter with 3700 and a couple other you know around a thousand or less uh tesla six thousand jobs um but one of the things i've been seeing discussed around this is uh there's one major tech company that we're not seeing reported in these layoff lists somebody that just celebrated a 39th birthday could it be apple yes and uh Part of the discussion is that Apple has definitely been more conservative in their hiring. Yeah. And also, you'll remember a week or two ago, uh, Tim Cook took a $50 million pay cut himself, which saves you a couple jobs. But yeah. uh, you do have to remember a lot of these big tech companies have had a uh, very good last couple of years with everybody working from home and everybody doing everything online. So they did a lot of hiring, and now we're kind of coming out of that and some economic uh, uncertainty mm-hmm. and uh, they're they're laying some of these people off so yeah 70,000 between these tech companies that's a lot of a lot of uh, techies Le- yeah. the whole learn to code thing isn't looking real good at the moment well these companies have just learned they can use chat GPT to do all <laughs> yes, the jobs do all the work <laughs> yeah and I saw somebody was ripping into some Google employee who had gone to social media to talk about what am I even supposed to do? I've been laid off. I, you know, am I going to have to go like work like eight hours a day somewhere and not get free lunch? And, you (laughs) know, but they, like I saw for Google, their severance package is pretty impressive. I think you're getting like three months full pay, six months of health insurance, um, you know, a ton of, you know, ton of time to go look for another job and it's not like there aren't jobs out there it's just they're not very desirable to some of these people yes yes i'm sure if they swallow their pride a bit they'll find something yes well you know who never has to swallow their pride dave's pro tip of the week nate i learned something new this week and i I often learn things new. It's actually one of my goals in life is to, to always be learning. ABL, maybe always be learning. Yeah. Um, and I learned something that uh, about Mac that I did not know. And this might come as a surprise to you as well. Yeah. And this article I found titled Kill and Yank. Have you ever heard of Kill and Yank? No. Well, uh, you may recall if you're on a Macintosh, that you can hold down the command button uh, plus C and it will copy whatever you have highlighted text wise yeah. or file wise or pretty much anything. Um, and then command V will paste it. Yeah. And of course, command X will cut it. And I yeah. had to explain to my wife exactly what the difference was. Mm-hmm. And I said, well, when you highlight something and hit the command X, it will remove it from the place 
and then when you paste it, it'll put it over there. Whereas copy leaves the item there and makes a duplicate. Yeah. So it's a subtle difference, but if you're planning to move things around, it's a, it saves a step. You just cut it, paste, cut, paste, cut, paste. So <clears throat> what if I told you there was a way to cut and paste that didn't destroy what you already had on your clipboard? I, what? I know. You can get third-party applications that do this yeah. all day long. But let's say you have a paragraph and you have highlighted it and you've copied it. And then the second paragraph, you want to take maybe one sentence from that paragraph, but you don't want to copy that sentence because it'll blow away what's ever on your clipboard from the first paragraph. Yeah. And so the strategy is, is you highlight and use command C to copy the first thing, but you can use control. Now keep in mind, that's not command, it's control, control, K will cut to a second clipboard what? and control Y will paste from a second clipboard, leaving your first clipboard with command C and V completely intact. Try it. Give it a try. Does it work for you? Let me try. So I'm going to try it too. I'm going to do command copy of our tip of the week and then I'm going to go somewhere else. Control. Okay. Well, now remember, it will cut whatever. Yes. <laughs> whatever you're doing. Well, it works. Yeah. Wow. So that's uh, that's that's what it is. Yes, and it. So you can now do it twice. Now I'm going to discuss the practicality of this because I'm I'm trying to do it here, and the keyboard shortcut is not it's not my friend. Um, <laughs> so let's see, Command V, it's still there, and then I do Control. Why? Yeah, it worked for me. I, it was a real live demo. I just wanted to try it again to make sure wow. uh, that I wasn't a snake oil salesman. So practicality, it's learning a new set of keyboard commands. Yeah. Uh, but kill and yank helps you remember K yeah. and oh, Y. Yes. That's why it's called kill and yank instead of copy and paste. It might be better just to download a third-party clipboard manager if you're yes. really going to be doing this. But I can see myself in a pinch going, oh, how do I do this or I mean and let's be honest you can usually just maybe copy something paste it elsewhere and then copy yeah, something but else I, I know it. this is because yeah. like a lot of times I'll be wanting to copy a headline and the link to yeah. have that now I do use third party uh, app called paste which is part of set app uh, previous pick of the week and I will tell you a clipboard manager and I think Windows has one built in now it has been one of the most uh, most bestest productivity <laughs> improvements I've made to my workflow. Yeah. Um, but yeah, for a casual user using this kill and yank in addition to your copy and paste, because mm -hmm. yeah, you have a paragraph you want to copy and the headline or something like that to be able to do both of them quickly with keyboard shortcuts and then be able to paste them separately and keep that stuff separate. That is, I had no idea. No. I've never heard of this. How Me long either. has it existed? And I really do wish that there was a secondary control button to hit just to copy instead yeah. of to cut it. But yes. hey, man, I'm, beggars can't be choosers. No. Yeah, that is crazy. We're, to, we're still learning, Dave, right. after seven years. Kill it and yank it. Kill it and yank it. That's a good one. Let us move on to our takes of the week. First up, uh, you know, there's been a lot of different AI talk, and uh, on the Mark and Todd cast, they were using the Resemble AI, which a couple of years back I tried out to do the my in, recreate my voice. Mm -hmm. And you had to go through and read all these different phrases, and then they created your voice. I was trying to go back to that service to use it again. It wasn't letting me get a new sample. But anyways, Microsoft has uh, a new zero-shot text-to-speech model can duplicate everyone's voice in three seconds. Holy cow. And they're calling it vol -E. We had the... Uh, Dolly e for the yeah. images, and we have Wally -E, the movie, but this is <laughs> with a V here. Um, but yeah, this they say that they can take three seconds of your voice and then they can uh, recreate it. What about that movie Sneakers? I think it was with Robert Redford, where they had to your voice is your password, they had yeah. to do all this complicated stuff. Now they could just sample a guy for three seconds and type anything they wanted it to say yeah yeah 
again, something that can be used for nefarious purposes as I'm, they've got some samples on the link here where they've got the speaker prompt and it, it, you know, it sounds pretty close and especially three seconds. So if you can do it in three seconds, if you up that to say 30 seconds, just imagine how much uh, more accurate it could be. Yeah, I, I really want to try this stuff. And then how cool would it be to train your own voice and then have a uh, an ebook reader? Yes, use your read, voice your, to read, read yourself. Read yourself. <laughs> or maybe it's your mom. You want your mom to read to you or your spouse. Or yes, yes. Whatever. And I think, wasn't it Amazon that had something on the on their devices where it could, you know, try to recreate grandpa's voice or something yes. to read to the kids. But I don't think that took off so well. And this is a always, little more yeah, advanced. They're trying to always use something creepy. Yes. Yeah. So I tried to look here and see if they have, I don't know if it's actually been released to the, uh, the public yet to do this, but again, we are seeing, uh, as you have mentioned, hockey stick growth on all, um, uh, I'll say in quotes, AI fronts, where it's these um, learning models that, uh, you know, recreating a voice, I don't necessarily see that as AI. Um, but well, it's I think it's just, the process that yeah. uses the, the algorithms and all that stuff. It generates its own code to yes. make it work. Yes. Machine learning is yeah. another term that's often thrown around and uh, being able to do this stuff is uh, just crazy. So yes, eventually we will just type all our notes out. Oh, we won't even, we'll just keep, I'll put the headlines like we already do and we'll have some prompt or say, Nate will take these stories. Dave will take these stories <laughs> or no, we won't even have to do that. We'll just put in there, create a podcast episode that's less than an hour long instead of what we do in real life mm -hmm. uh, pick the stories that would be best for nate and dave and, and create discuss. video eventually it'll just be able to create video too and then yeah. we're done and then no one would watch it because yeah like why what's the point because <laughs> there's going to be 300 other people doing it yes. better than us yes yeah, it's crazy. We started out this show kind of talking about being present for these momentous, yes, being in the zeitgeist of what's going on. And you and I have both lived through the epoch that was marked by the creation of the internet. Yeah. And this is going to be a new epoch or epoch, however you say that word, where moving forward, we've never had a time where we didn't have AI yeah. Uh, yeah. for visual, audio, and for text. It's just, it's going to be, it's going to exist from now on. Yeah. We're never going to go back. Yeah. Personal computers, the internet. Uh, yeah. We've lived through it all. This AI stuff. We have lived through everything. Running water. Running water. Uh, yes. Plumbing in the house. Fire. The creation of fire. <laughs> yeah. That was, I remember that as a child. <laughs> yeah. The wheel. Oh, yes. To know that we were alive during all those times. Uh <laughs> And um, speaking of AI podcast creation, uh, this article from The Verge, new podcast creation has fallen off a cliff. <laughs> yeah, it has. Uh, the The feed, which is the Libsyn uh, company that we host our show through, yes. has their own podcast. And it was funny, they they don't have that many listeners. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They've got like a thousand or something. And I was like, oh, that's it? Or, I mean, it may, might even been less than that. I think, I think he was surprised that if they got more than like a few hundred the first three days or something like yeah, that and i'm yeah. like oh that's pretty small anyway he was the guy on there always maintains and he always combats these articles that come out that says there's this many podcasts and blah blah he's yeah. like no there's that many podcasts but 50 percent of those are dead yeah they've, yes. e they've either done zero shows they just set it up or they've done one show and have never produced another thing. And so he likes to give like the real numbers. And so instead of it being like 1.4 million, it's like 600,000 or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, and they're saying that it's dropped down, um, you know, 80% of, and so this is new podcasts mm -hmm. um, between 2020, which was kind of the peak. Cause again, everybody was home and said, I'm going to start a podcast. Yeah. While I'm getting paid to work from home. 
Uh, and it's just, I mean, it's a crowded market too. I think, um, you know, I've talked to several clients and stuff. They're like, well, for marketing, I really want to start a podcast. And I'm like, that's not a great way for marketing because it's it's a tough thing to get people to join into. But they also, um, the linked uh, tweet thread uh, from, and I think it's information from chart uh, without the E, um, and they are looking at um, number of new podcast episodes. In 2020, it was around 30 million, uh, and in 2022, it was down around 20 million. So that's dropped by a third just of how yeah. many episodes are becoming or being created. And that's probably 10,000 or 10 million of those people just made one episode in 2020 and never did it again. Yeah, yeah. And then they also have another little chart there. Um, percentage of U.S. adults that listen to a podcast in the last month. Uh, and that's total U.S. population 12 plus. So uh, 2019, it was uh, maybe around 35 percent, 32 percent. In 2020, it was up to 41 percent. Now it looks like it's down to 38 percent. So that's uh, pretty even there, not as drastic. Um, but there's just so many stinking podcasts out there. Yeah. And only one you should listen to. Yeah, every you should week. just get rid of all other podcasts. And here's what we'll do. I'll tell you, this is what we'll do. Okay. Listen to the Not Nerd podcast, and we will add content to fill in the gaps of the other podcasts you've been listening to. So you want some finance? We could talk yeah. about finance. You want religion? We could talk about religion. Politics? Yeah. We could remove our sounder. That True, says crime. That True crime? True crime. Can, uh, most popular all. category yeah we'll do pop culture we'll yeah we'll we'll have a little 30 second segment on each <laughs> to get you up to speed on all the the top genres of podcasts and even with that it's going to be a six hour podcast <laughs> yes yes exactly each week. <laughs> exactly speaking of let's keep moving um this is a, a, a sad one. Uh, we've talked for many years and had the link for Amazon Smile, uh, their program where like 0.5% of each purchase you made on Amazon would uh, be given to a nonprofit of your choice. Mm -hmm. Well, they're shutting that down. Well, you blew it. You needed to start the segment by saying, this next article really makes me frown. <laughs> Yes. Amazon oh, is closing I did. down Smile. Oh, man. Yes, yes. So Amazon frown. Um, <laughs> and an interesting take, uh, it was launched in 2013, and somebody from within Amazon said, uh, I think maybe anonymously, I don't know, but that the reason they started this program is because they were tired of paying Google to get people to their website because mm. everybody would just go to Google, type in Amazon, and then probably click on an ad, and Amazon was having to pay for that. So instead, they were trying to train everybody, hey, when you go to Amazon, go to smile.amazon.com, and you can give to a nonprofit. So it was, it was a good thing, but it was also a marketing move by them. Mm. Um, and people would be motivated because they would think, oh, I can give to my charity versus yes. I'm just going to. There was a motivation yeah. behind it. Um, so, yeah, it was they say the uh, charities have received about 500 million um, in the 10 years that they've they've been doing it. So uh, not a ton of money. And hopefully Amazon uh, will still do uh, some other things for charities. I sure they probably do but uh, along with their 18,000 layoffs this yeah. was another program and they've cut they cut affiliate um, payouts too mm -hmm. you know by a, a big percentage several years ago so well you know this surprises nobody but large companies and their charity work are usually to avoid tax yes yeah. there's no uh, incentive yeah, so they were avoiding world. taxes and avoiding Google. So yeah. they had a dual purpose behind um, their program. And I mean, another thing, you know, over the last 10 years, Amazon has become the default where I go to shop. Yeah, so it's not too. like I'm like, oh, which shopping site should I go to today? Should I just search Google? It's like, nope. First place I go to is Amazon.com. So they don't have to no. invest as much in marketing because they've established themselves 
for many people is the go-to place. They've won. Yes, yes. And I will remind people in our own selfish uh, ambitions, go through notpicks.com before you go to Amazon and hit one of our affiliate links there. Yeah. Uh, More on notpicks a little later in the episode. And I hate to put multiple security and privacy stories, but I want to just pump through a couple that we had this week because uh, otherwise I, they get backed up for months and it's no longer relevant. But first one, PayPal accounts breached in large scale credential stuffing attacks. So um, they're sending out data breach notifications to thousands of users who had their accounts accessed uh, in credential stuffing Attacks where hackers attempt to access an account by trying out username and password pairs sourced from data leaks. So uh, please use unique passwords because if you have the same password everywhere, PayPal's one of those ones. It's kind of important because you probably have money in there or it is linked to uh, your money. So, yeah. Ugh. I hate this stuff. Drives I, me crazy. Yes, yes. Uh, another one a US airline accidentally exposes the no-fly list on the unsecured server. Yeah, and the accidentally (sighs) is typically, we have very poor security measures on everything. It's, you're only as strong as your weakest link. Yeah. Like, you cannot trust employees or managers or anybody to do the right thing. You have to force them to have good security measures. Yes, and like this one, the government might have the no-fly list secured, large airlines, but this was Commute Air, which I've never heard of before. Never. And uh, they, it had a vast amount of company data, including private information on almost 1,000 employees, uh, and also this no-fly list, which appears to have more than 1.5 million, with an M, entries in total. I wonder how I get on that list. <laughs> well, I've seen some TikTok videos of some ways that you can uh, <laughs> definitely get on there. But yeah. um, And then uh, MailChimp was hacked again. I actually got this from one of my clients. Um, we use MailChimp, but I think only 35 accounts uh, were accessed on them. But one of them was WooCommerce, which mm. is a large, huge uh, WordPress e-commerce system in their account. Uh, was hacked so they sent out emails to all the WooCommerce users saying hey just to let you know um, and then I didn't even put a link in there but there was another T-Mobile hack this week yeah or I announced mean, this week for one of my favorite companies they're really not winning any favors right now by their stupid hacking things that are going on <sighs> and of course it's the people hacking them are to blame but yes again on the security are you doing the right thing to secure my information? Yeah, yeah. So 37 million with an M T-Mobile customers were hacked. Um, a bad actor accessed personal data from 37 current customers, or 37 million, 37, uh, <laughs> in a November data breach. So this one, we might have talked about that one, but they did their regulatory filing on this. Mm-hmm. And uh, it is just frustrating. But... A glimmer of hope. There's some good uh, news out there. <laughs> on the security and privacy front, ransomware revenue down as more victims refuse to pay. Hopefully people are doing the one backup is none backup. Yes. And they're s- securing their data in other places so that if they do get ransomware, is that a verb? <laughs> Pretty um, much. They can just go to their backups and restore their system without paying these criminals who have locked away their info. Yeah, so uh, 2020 and 2021 were both about $765 million uh, received by ransomware attackers, and it was down to only $457 million in 2022. But that is a pretty big uh, drop, more than $300 million. Yeah. Um, so I think... Uh, this constant battle, they're starting to learn, hey, if we keep paying these guys, they're going to keep doing it. So We don't negotiate with terrorists. Oh, no, no. Well, let us cleanse our palate. I found a fun one for a bonus odd t- 
take. And uh, we talked several times about our uh, starting a, what, son of a niche podcast yeah. or a yeah. niche of a niche podcast. Uh, but I found a fun little web site called uh, Niche Museums or Niche Museums, however you like to pronounce it. Um, but you go here and it's tiny museums near you and you can even uh, use your location or view a map if you're traveling somewhere um, to see what unique little interesting museums might be near you hmm, so it's a museum finder basically. yes yes and they're they're focusing on the smaller maybe off the beaten path not like the portland art museum mm -hmm. um but other places so uh the closest one that shows up to me here in tualatin uh, Oregon is the Devilish Little Things Museum, which is 18.81 miles away um, wow. in Vancouver, Washington. And uh, European, like, devil creations. <laughs> European devil creations? Well, it's devilish little things. So, like, the picture they have here is um, some little, some sort of, like, jars that are uh, crafted after devils. But then if you <laughs> click on the page, it'll show you several uh, different pictures. So yeah, the Devil Museum, I don't know if that's necessarily the one that I want to visit. Well, I think just uh, it could take a road trip down to Mindenhall's Museum of Gasoline Pumps. Yes. Petrolina. Yes. This is down in Bolton, California, which I'm not exactly sure where that is, but uh, I'm sure I could look it up yes yes the uh jelly belly factory now the second one for my location is the evergreen aviation and space museum would i i don't necessarily consider that a tiny museum that's pretty big that's it's where the big. it's not spruce niche. goose is <laughs> yeah uh, but still it's listed on there the donner memorial state park visitor center well uh, we're bearing the lead here don't forget about the Oh, I, I guess it's the Church of Elvis. I was thinking Museum oh, of Elvis yes. in downtown Portland. Uh, but it is a church. It's not a museum. Yes, so. yes. But it is uh, interesting nonetheless. But yeah, a fun little fun little thing that you can uh, find some uh, roads less traveled um, for, uh, for some interesting museums all around us. And if you're in Wallace County, Kansas, you could stop by, well, you could stop by the Wallace County historical museum that's there but in town there's an old mansion in wallace kansas that has been converted to kind of a bed and breakfast or a, mm. a, you can go there on sundays and eat lunch and i can't remember a oh, rubidoux it's the rubidoux house Ooh. and it's french and so there's some x's at the end or whatever yeah but a uh, rubidoux house if you're in wallace wallace uh kansas nice uh you could also visit ray bandar's bone palace in san francisco hmm. the palace of bones oh permanently closed oh, oh no. man they've got griffith observatory here down in near hollywood yeah that's that's not a niche no that's it's in every movie yes yes yeah. the maybe more like the cleveland hungarian museum which looks like it's inside of a mall that's a little something that <laughs> yeah, you might you not go. have so there's a there's a mix of on here of things you yeah. might have heard of and you might not have but uh fun nonetheless yeah i mean this is interesting if you're traveling and going to an area this would be a great website to check out to find those obscure little places yes and if you're looking for obscure things it's time for our picks of the week. The, week. the week so i've been sitting on this one for a while because i've been one because i've been wanting to test it out and and see how it performs mm. and this of course everybody's gonna guess is the orion web browser for ios yeah now you and I have talked about the Brave browser. I was yeah. I switched to Brave, and it would block my ads on YouTube, and it would give me my security that I wanted from pop-ups and cookies and all that stuff right on my web browser. And it kind of puts Facebook in jail so that it can't mm. do the things that Facebook does. Well, I was turned on to this Orion browser, and I actually prefer it. Ooh. It blocks my ads on, fa on uh, YouTube. It's fast. Um, it's got a lot of features and one of the main features I was looking for is the ability to prevent applications from opening when you press the link. So oh. for example, let's say you have the YouTube application yes. installed on your device. You click a link on a web page, it 
opens up the YouTube app. Well, I wanted to open up the web page, but there's no way to do that because it always sends all the traffic to the app. Yeah. So this will allow you per application to either open it up inside the web browser or to open up the accompanying application that may or may not be on your device. That was the feature I was looking for. That's what allowed me to find Orion and I actually prefer it over other browsers. There's some extension stuff in there and some switches and all these. Yeah. Like you can do pretty much anything. You can tell the internet that the browser is a different browser if you want to. Hmm. And all kinds of other neat little features kind of for the hacker mindset. Yeah. But even if you're not a hacker, it it does all the great things of blocking trackers, ads, all those things. So I like it. Orion. And it's 100% free. Very nice. That uh, I just downloaded it, and I will check it out on my iPhone. Uh, well, my pick of the week is a uh, gift that I gave to my wife for Christmas, and uh, my daughter seems to be using it uh, more than anyone. But this, a vacuum cleaner. Oh, I I couldn't find any new vacuum cleaners that we didn't already have. Okay. Together. So <laughs> instead, I went with the Snail Lax 3-in-1 Foot Warmer and Vibration Foot Massager and Back Massager with Heat, Fast Heating Pad, and 5 Massage Modes. Feet Warmers for Women, Men for Plantar Fasciitis Relief. Oh, so the, the Foot Warmer works for both men and women. Yes, okay, yes. So, and children, as I found out. Yeah, as well. I, was, I was trying to think of a foot warmer that would only work for one specific gender, but yes. I, you know, I yes. guess those don't exist. <laughs> yes. Sheesh. They uh, just, <laughs> they, it's a keyword they wanted to put in there for sure. Yes. So um, much like my um, iOS gaming controller that I had last week, this was... I was thinking, oh, Chelsea, you know, she likes to have her feet massaged. She likes to keep her feet warm. They're Who always doesn't? cold. Yeah. And so I was like, for Christmas, I'm going to get her one of these. And so I started looking on Amazon. And of course, they have these, you know, huge ones that are several hundred dollars and complicated. And there's, you know, a little uh, person in there that m gently massages your feet. And there's, you know, heating, cooling, and uh, room temperaturing, all these features and everything. But I went with my philosophy of, hey, I'm going to find a lower cost one. Mm -hmm. We'll try that out. If we use it a ton, we could invest in a better one. Or is this one good enough? Uh, so that's why I chose this one. And um, it's very nice. I'll uh, send you a picture here, Dave, just so you can kind of get a uh, visual on it. Because I will be asking you, uh, what would you pay for a device like this? And it's um, it kind of reminds me of a... Uh, one giant slipper. Uh, I think I tried to walk in it one day. That doesn't, but it plugs into the wall and then it's kind of got a gentle massaging and warming thing in her, but very soft, very nice. Uh, this is very interesting. It is like one large moccasin. Yeah. It has, it is nothing like I was imagining in my mind's eye what this thing was. I was thinking it was just like a mat. Yeah, like a platform that you yeah. put your... And those exist too, but this, it, with the warming, it's got the nice fuzzy rim, <laughs> and the, so you slide your feet in, and then it's got controls on the it's side. It's like one giant slipper. It's a giant... It's a one slipper for a giant horse. Yes. Because yeah. it looks like a horse hoof. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I will let you know that it uh, is four stars on... 3,720 uh, ratings. Um, but yeah, it's it's very nice and um, we've all used it and it's just, it's not going to like fix your feet, but it's definitely going to gently massage them and uh, warm them if you have both the settings turned on. I am pleased to see that it is washable. Yes, yes. You can, it, you can unzip it and wash the little slipper part of it. Yeah. And the bottom is is non-slip in case you are Isla and you want to hop around the house, you won't yes. uh, slip. Oh, and I, I, sorry, I've got to send you another picture because okay. I mentioned in the title and I wasn't sure how this worked. We haven't tried this, uh, the back massager. So what? you can zip off the slipper part and then you can just kind of lean up uh, or lay on the massaging and heating part for your back, neck, leg, anywhere. Hmm. So it is multifunction. We'll have to try that out. Interesting. So, uh, and, and it can double as a hot plate, it looks like. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Keep your uh, quiche warm at right. the potluck. Yeah. I can, 
I can imagine somebody sticking a dish down inside of the little foot area yeah. to keep it warm. <laughs> yes. Um, you might want to wash it first. So interesting. So the price on this, hmm, I'm going to go out on a limb. They're kind of they're kind of like four price categories on Amazon. There's like the twenty five dollars and under. There's like the fifty dollars and under. Seventy five and of course one hundred and under. I'm going to say this is around the fifty dollar price mark. <sighs> Dave, and, yeah. You're way off. The list price is forty nine ninety nine. <laughs> so ding ding ding. I'm yeah. even gonna give you a I'll give you the pro tip bell for that one because nice. you're so close. But if you act now, there is a twenty five percent clickable coupon. What? Yeah. So that would take you down to what thirty seven fifty. Well, I was gonna I was going to say it was probably be between 37 and 50 is what I was going to say. Yeah. So that's amazing that um, you can get one for as little as under $40. Yes, yes. And I am looking at the related products from Snailax, and they do have uh, many different models of uh, foot massager. But yeah, so this is uh, this is a good one. Go check it out uh, at notpicks.com. And speaking of notpicks.com, uh, it is giveaway time. Oh, oh, boy. So we did get some more reviews. Chelsea did a bunch more, and then we uh, had some more. But Dave, I need you to pick a number between one and three three huh well i mean literally the number between one and three is two but no oh, yes <laughs> pick one two or three <laughs> as a number i will give you a little more flexibility on there i'm going to pick three as the number three well the third listener review to come in was from a friend of the show date or friend of the show day baylor no, <laughs> no it was jared butler oh nice uh, so he left a review on your leatherman um, oh very multi-tool cool. and then wes had left a couple other reviews on uh, grammarly and i forget which the other one he used so uh thank you guys for doing that and jared i will get you your aki minima 20 watt usb-c power delivery charger very 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 cool so uh a quick story on that leatherman tool yeah we went to the blazers game the other oh night, yeah <laughs> did they confiscate it from you i had it on my my belt because i got the little belt thing and i'm in line to get into the door and i'm like yes. oh they're not metal let detectors me inside with this so i went in and i put it in the thing and the guy's like i can't let you in with that so yeah. i was hoping i could get it by but, yeah so I went out, and instead of walking clear back to my car, I found a little nook in a tree, and I just stuck it in there. <laughs> nice. And then after, I came back and got it, and it was still there. So, Whew. Yes, yeah, that is a uh, pro tip. If you're going to yeah. sporting events, they have lots of metal detectors these days, so make sure you check your pockets first. There's, there's an unrealized income opportunity. These places need to have an array of lockers yeah, that you can yeah. rent for 5 bucks or whatever for the night put your valuables in there and then come back and get them. I don't understand why they don't have those. Yes. Yes. They should do that. It is at airports as well. Yeah. I think know, some airports have those. Yeah. But, but uh, yeah, go blazers. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> I was, I wasn't able to ply or anybody while I was in there. <laughs> yes. Unfortunately. Yes. Oh, well that's um, probably for the best because yeah. I know how you get it. Sporting events. I do. I get a little crazy. A little crazy. Well, we've got another crazy long episode here, so we better wrap it up. Make sure you go to notpicks.com. We'll have another giveaway up there uh, over the next couple of weeks. Go check it out. Uh, working on adding more products on there. Um, we've got some good stuff. And you can also, since smiledonamazon.com is gone, go there. Click right at the top. I have just a pure Amazon link, so you don't have to click through a product if you're just shopping on Amazon, but that will uh, give us a little kickback and help support the show and our families. Yes, we will all starve without the yes, if you don't $2 click. a month. <laughs> yes, yes, indeed. Uh, well, thank you. Share it with a friend. Share it with everyone you know, everyone you don't know, so that we can all get out there and tech better. So let's start OBS in three, two, one. Merp. I almost started streaming. Oh, I've got two, two links. Speaking of copy and paste. 
He should have used kill and yank. Wait a minute, why is it shaped like an eggplant?